I am Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, home of Good Morning Girls, and we are reading through the Bible, cover to cover, just one chapter a day. So this week, you completed your reading in Philippians chapter 2, and today I want to talk about the secret to unity found in this passage, and also, I'm going to talk a little bit about my unpopular opinion on boundaries. You see, I feel like boundaries has become kind of a buzzword both inside and outside the church over the last decade. You know, like 20 years ago, I didn't hear a lot about boundaries, but now there's a lot of authors, a lot of podcasters, a lot of YouTubers talking about boundaries and how to have healthy relationships. And I am so grateful because I have learned so much. I have read a lot of these books and listened to these podcasts. I even uh, did a mentorship course about talking about breaking free from people pleasing. And I talk about what I've learned about how to develop healthy boundaries. So boundaries do matter. But the part that I struggle with is how do we practice boundaries inside the church while also honoring God with the type of unity that he seeks to have within his church? Is it possible? You see, I've seen boundaries become a disruption to unity. Um, I've seen Chris, uh, you know, sisters in Christ where um, they have conflict and hurt, and rather than following Matthew 18, where we are told by Jesus that we are to confront and have a conversation and, and talk with them one-on-one -on -one to seek reconciliation, instead they just pass right over that and put up a boundary, right, to protect themselves. Or... I've seen uh, Sisters in Christ actually do that, where they sit down and they talk and they apologize and they say they've forgiven each other. It looks like a really fruitful conversation, but afterwards, one of them decides that the other one is not safe. And as a result, they put up a boundary, they put up a wall, and that friendship never moves forward in the way that God intended for it to be. And so it becomes, boundaries can be a disruption to unity. And so I want to look at Philippians chapter 2 today. What does God tell us? What is the secret to unity? And then how can we effectively also balance that with boundaries? So Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord in one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Now we see repeated here in this passage the word same, same, same. And the word same means identical or not different. Our hearts in the church are to beat with the same pulse. We're also told that we are not to be conceited, that we need to be humble, right? You know, we see that pride breaks up friendships, marriages, uh, churches, business partnerships. We are told by Paul that we are not to look only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others. And, and I appreciate that because he's saying that our interests do matter. And that's a part of boundaries, if you've ever read anything on it, is that, you know, we matter. We're allowed to hold space. We don't have to make ourselves small. But he does say that we uh, are not to be selfish, that we need to think of others' interests too. And then Paul gives us an example of what this looks like and what our humility is to look like in the church. And this is a challenge for us. Look at verse 5. He says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. I love this passage. It's so strong and amazing, it's, and it's packed with theological content that we are not going to look at today uh, because it talks a lot about God the Father, God the Son, and their roles. But in its context, we are being taught how to have unity. See, we are told that we are to have the mind of Christ Jesus. This is the disposition that we are to take. So what is the mind of Christ here that we see as his example? It's the secret to unity and it is humility. 
Jesus humbled himself and became a man and he willingly laid his life down and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. You know, Jesus was the only man who ever lived who didn't have to die and yet he gave up his rights. He laid down his life, no one took it from him. He laid it down and this is where humility begins. You see, Jesus was misunderstood. Jesus was deserted by his friends. He was betrayed by one of his disciples with a kiss. He was beaten and mocked and spit on and nailed to a cross and died a criminal's death. And we are told, have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul doesn't tell us to seek it. He doesn't tell us to try to have it. He says, have it, do it, be humble like Christ. This is a secret to unity. And we see in verse 10, the result that he says that every knee bows, every voice is united in the universe, declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We see peace as everyone is united. God exalted him. He exalted his humility. Jesus did not have to exalt himself. So we, following his example, we must not live our lives exalting ourselves, pushing our own agendas, focused on our own interests. You know, it's only natural when we are mistreated to be angry. As a matter of fact, boundaries will teach us that anger usually is a signal, it's a red flag that someone has stepped over one of our boundaries. And so it's inevitable, but being angry is not wrong. It's our response that could be wrong. And we all know we're not to take revenge, right? That we're not to strike back, we're not to get even, we're not to slander the name of others. But sometimes I think we're tempted to say, well, I'm not gonna do all those things, but I'm gonna separate, I'm gonna stonewall them, I'm gonna block them on all my social media, right? Because that's my boundary and that's my right. But Ephesians 4, 26 says, be angry and sin not. And so when that temptation comes to respond to anger and hurt, I wanna encourage you to let that mind of Christ be in you. Let the spirit convict you and soften you. And I'm speaking to myself here and say to myself, remember Courtney, they will know you are a Christian by your love. You know, when we're tempted to break fellowship, don't be so fast. Sometimes when we follow Jesus' way and we talk with another sister in Christ and they acknowledge they're wrong and they apologize and, and we hug and we forgive, that is when the bond and the love that is deep, can grow deeper in a friendship, Christ does that. He can make us, he can give us greater peace, greater love, greater joy in a friendship when we are living in obedience to him and we follow his ways. When two people are humble, he brings oneness. He brings peace, not separation. Now, I don't share this to condemn anyone who right now might be going through a friendship fallout. As a matter of fact, I am 48 years old and trust me, I have been through my fair share of friendship fallouts. And if there's one thing I've learned is that it does take two obedient Christians to bring back that oneness and that forgiveness and that deep bond of love that God wants us to have. And so we live in a broken world where not everything is gonna be tied up neatly in a bow here on this side of heaven. But you know, wouldn't it be amazing if everyone just followed God's word and we all obeyed? I mean, everyone in the whole world. What an amazing world we would live in. But that is not our reality right now. And so Romans 12, 18 tells us, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Be humble, seek peace. You know, I wanna share in closing, as I think about boundaries, again, I believe that boundaries are biblical, that the Bible is filled with boundaries from God for us because he loves us. But when I was in high school, I memorized Luke 9, 23, and I clung to it as my life verse. And Jesus is speaking. He says, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to live for Christ, denying myself. But now that I'm older, I have grappled with this verse because Jesus says, deny yourself and boundaries say, don't be a doormat. That's not healthy, right? And so I think there is a very fine line, right, that we have to find between denying ourselves, putting others' desires and interests above ours, sacrificing for others, practicing humility, being long-suffering when suffering is required, being forgiving when forgiveness is needed. There's this fine line between all of this that we do for Christ and self-protecting and practicing healthy boundaries. And so friends, all I ask of you is that you would use careful discernment when implementing your boundaries. 
Be careful that you are not the cause of a disruption of unity, calling it boundaries, when really it is your selfish desires and pride. So on the flip side, do protect yourself from evil. There are manipulative people inside the church, outside the church, even sometimes inside our homes. There are those who will twist God's word or twist your words to hurt you, to come after you. And so Jesus warned that there are wolves in sheep's clothing in the church. Matthew 7, 15 says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Not everyone in the church is a sister in Christ. These wolves are part of the reason that it is difficult to get unity in the body of Christ because they are not serving the Lord. They are serving the enemy and they are disrupting unity. And so we must be wise. We must be discerning. The struggle is real and I just have to be honest, I struggle with this. And I pray that God will give us the wisdom to know the difference between when we are practicing healthy boundaries that are spirit led and when we're simply just holding a grudge and feeding our selfish desires and using boundaries as an excuse. So remember, have this mind that was in Christ Jesus. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. And that is his desire for us, that we would live in obedience to him, that we would be humble and that we would follow him. And then God exalted him. And so I encourage you today to just be wise, be discerning, Practice that in your relationships and always remember to cover everything with love, that you would seek humility and that you would follow God in your relationships. Keep walking with the King.